Let's talk about seasonal, um, incorporating seasonal produce and why we should incorporate seasonal produce into our diets. Um, seasonal produce is ideally ideal for, the, for each person because it is usually fresher, tastier, and more nutritious. And usually seasonal produce is more affordable than out of season produce. And nature provides us with a wonderful variety of fall produce that is full of phytonutrients. And phytonutrients are nutrients produced by plants made up of the plant chemicals that they use to defend themselves against insects, bacteria, and viruses. And the fall pr produce provides fruits and vegetables that are mostly of the orange and yellow color, but it's really important to emphasize a wide variety of colors in our diets to, in order to get the benefits that each color can offer to our bodies. And for example, the orange and yellow color that is associated with fall produce provides benefits in eye health immune function and growth development. If the produce is white color, it provides um, benefits in healthy bones, circulation, artery function, and fights heart disease. If it's the green color of produce, it provides benefits in eye health, lung health, and also wound healing. Purple color, heart, brain, and cognitive health. And red color is good for the prostate, urinary tract, and also fighting against inflammation. And you can see how each color of fountains and fruits and vegetables can provide unique benefits to our bodies. And what's in season? There are many fruits and vegetables that are in season of many different colors. And for example, the eggplant, it is rich in fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And it also has unique health benefits of being good for the heart, the brain, artery, and also cognitive health. For example, leafy greens, are rich also in vitamins, minerals, fiber, and antioxidants. And they also provide unique health benefits in fighting against inflammation in our bodies. And this is important for cancer because um, the antioxidants found in fruits and vegetables of many different colors help to neutralize um, free radicals that are usually associated with development of cancer. And we, by incorporating a lot of fruits and vegetables, it helps to our bodies fight off the toxins that we get from everyday life from fragrance, environmental pollutants, toxins found in our food. And so we should incorporate a wide variety of fruits and vegetables of different colors in our diets. The color of the fruits and vegetables will tell you what health benefit they have, okay? And so, you know, for example, red. Red fruits and vegetables are really, really important for anti-inflammatory, okay? Why do we care about inflammation? The reason that we care about inflammation is that when our cells become inflamed, they're just like something, like if we get a, a sore on our arm, they get red, they get swollen, and the cell deteriorates. So if that's happening inside of your body, that wreaks all kinds of, of havoc in your body and causes chronic disease, okay? So the red and orange vegetables and fruits are critical if you are having some type of inflammatory disease, okay? Really wanna focus on that. Um, some of the other ones now, like what Angel mentioned, your green vegetables, this green apple that we're gonna be using today for our cooking demo, this has a lot of uh, the phytonutrient that specifically targets eye health, okay? So the, this is very important for eye health. You also need to consider that phytonutrients are, are big time antioxidants. Okay, we talked about antioxidants in one of the previous classes, but I wanna, re, I wanna go over it again because it is really important for, for you particularly. Um, antioxidants are those chemicals, those substances that go through the body and capture all of the free radicals that are in the body causing problems. What is a free radical? A free radical is something that 
goes through the digestive tract, and it could be from processed food, it could be from saturated fat, but it's something that goes through and destroys and deteriorates the cells along your digestive tract, okay? So it causes digestive problems, um, it can cause inflammation of your organs, of your brain, of your muscles. Um, so they really do wreak havoc in your body. So it's really important that we get enough antioxidants in our bodies to prevent chronic disease. And that's where the phytonutrients in plants comes to play. So phytonutrients are produced by plants to protect them from insects, from bacteria, from viruses, and from the UV rays of the sun. So those phytonutrients in a plant sustain the health of the plant. Well, guess what? They also sustain our health, okay? They protect our bodies from the same things, all right? So it's really important. All of the different colors um, give different health benefits. The richer the color, the more phytonutrients that are in there. So when you're going around shopping for your produce, you want to pick the most colorful produce available, all right? Because the richer the color, the more phytonutrients, the healthier that the fruit and vegetable will be, right? Um, and like what Angel said, yes, ma'am? Thank you for asking that question, because each color of produce has a different um, chemical makeup, and even the white vegetables and fruits, like, you know, turnips, for, for example, it's white on the inside, mushrooms, onions, they actually have a lot of phytonutrients as well. What I'm saying is, the richer the color, so for example, if you have, um, if you're looking at the produce, you want to pick the most vibrant colors. Exactly. Yes, okay. yes. So thank you for asking that question because that's a, that's, that's a big, that's a common, um, not misconception, but people think that, you know, onions don't really have any value because they're not colorful. And that's, that's not true. They actually do. And, um, you know, the, the really deep blues and purples, um, the browns, you know, with the potato peel, um, all of that, they all have phytonutrients that are plant-created substances that help our bodies. Yes. Yes. So how many of you eat the skin of your vegetables? Yes. Okay, so the majority of people here. That's wonderful because that's where a lot of the nutrients are, right? Like the avocado. When we, when we open up the avocado, that really deep green part right next to the skin is super rich in antioxidants, super rich. So you always want to scrape that content because, you know, you're, you're just throwing away nutrients, basically. When you peel your, vitam your, your um, <laughs> vitamins, when you peel your vegetables and fruits, you're really peeling away a lot of nutrition. So you want to make sure that you incorporate the skins as, as often as possible, okay? Now, one of the things that I've made you today that we're going to serve you is pumpkin hummus. How many of you like hummus? Yes? How many of you have made hummus before? Okay, so a few people. Yeah, so um, I made this one for you. We're going to demonstrate another recipe, but for this one, I made it for you, and I'm glad I did because the food processor that I picked out 
did not work. <laughs> so it was a mess. So anyway, um, I, I went ahead and made it for you. You can use a blender. If you have a food processor, um, making hummus is a little bit easier in a food processor, but blenders work just as, just as well. So what we use, and you have the recipe there in front of you. We used... Um, Garbanzo beans or chickpeas, same thing. Um, these are very rich in protein. And as we talked about earlier in the diabetes series, protein is important at your meal because it moderates your blood sugar levels, right? It sort of slows down the, um, the absorption rate of the sugars that are, or starches that you're eating. So your garbanzo beans. And then we used um, just canned pumpkin, right? We just used canned pumpkin. You, you could use fresh pumpkin, but it's, it takes time. Canned is just as nutritious, packed with vitamin A. Um, so this is what we added to flavor the hummus. Um, we used ta tahini, tahini. Um, now, this one thing that I wanted to talk to you about about this um, product is that it's really rich in phosphorus and manganese, which uh, many people, many people that are older than 50, do not get enough manganese. So it's a it's a product that if you're not familiar with, I'd like for you to become familiar with it because it's really great and it, it adds a lot of flavor to the foods that. That we, um, that we can create. But it also is made up of the 50% of the fat in tahini is monounsaturated, which is the type of fat that is really good for heart health and um, is the, the one that we recommend. Did you have a question? Oh, where would we find that? Yeah, we'll look. We. Um, I know we we bought this at H E B. Um, it is. Let me let you see it. Or can you pass that around? It's like a paste. It's like a paste, and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the tahini. And then we put a little bit of cumin in there to flavor it. Some orange juice and also toasted sesame oil. How many of you use toasted sesame oil? If, if not, I, I really encourage you to try it. It adds so much flavor to your dishes, especially if you're making an Asian dish. It's, um, it just has a, a really strong flavor that you don't need to use a lot of the oil at all, just a little bit. It's excellent with salmon. Yes, I agree. Stir-fried vegetables is excellent with. Um, we put a little bit of orange juice in there, and then we topped it off with unsalted pumpkin seeds and some pomegranate seeds. Now, we, I, we purchased just the ones that have been um, taken out you know, for us because it's easier and convenient. Um, how many of you have ever taken the seeds out of a pomegranate? What did you think? <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> yes, it is. It can be challenging and it can be messy right because that that color stays in there but let me tell you the pomegranate seed has so many health benefits um, and the thing about you know the phytonutrients is that they work pretty much immediately um, they when once they hit your your 
digestive tract, um, they begin working. So um, pomegranate seeds are a wonderful addition to salads, um, to different sauces. Um, you, can, you, you can add them to virtually you know, any, any savory dish or any sweet dish, and they, they accompany it very, very well. And during the holiday seasons, that really vibrant red adds such a, another dimension to your dish because we all eat with our eyes. And that color just pops. You know, we have, we have another recipe called twisted guacamole. So it's guacamole with pomegranate seeds and it just pops, you know, for, for holiday um, dinners. So would you all like to taste the pumpkin hummus? Okay, can you serve that? So Angel's gonna serve that for you and I, as you're, as you're tasting it, I want you to think of some other hummus recipes that some other ingredients that we might want to add to hummus. Yes. Yes, so we just use we just use the canned pumpkin, and it says ingredients, pumpkin. <laughs> that's it. So it's just pumpkin. But, and that's a very important question because a lot of, I'm, I'm so glad that you read your food labels because so many additives can be, you know, can, can interrupt the work that the antioxidants are trying to do, right? So, you, you know, we're eating all of these antioxidants, and then if we're just eating a lot of processed food on top of that, we're negating the antioxidants, right? So you always want to make sure that your ingredients are, especially when it comes to vegetables and fruits, that it's just the vegetable and the fruit, and maybe a little bit of water. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Um, why is canned pumpkin orange and fresh pumpkin is orange? What's the difference? There's a very distinct difference. I think it's because when you bake the pumpkin, does the pumpkin change color when it when it's heated? It's still bright, it's still bright orange. I'm gonna have to look look that up. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, that's a good question. Um I would think normally when a fruit or a vegetable changes color with heat, it's because it's oxygen because it's it's um, oxygen has had a chance to work on it. But I'm gonna look that up. That's right. Yeah, that'll give me something to look up. And I'll, I'll let you know the next, the next time we meet. Yeah. The purpose of the pumpkin seed? Oh, okay, so she has a good question as well. So she asked, what is the purpose of the pumpkin seed oil in the recipe? And it's twofold. One is that they are, it's very nutritious. Um, and number two is that it adds a different flavor. Now, we did not use pumpkin seed oil in this recipe. Um, we used just regular olive oil. So, and then the toasted sesame oil. But, um, but if you have a chance to taste pumpkin seed oil, um, you might want to start adding it to your uh, pumpkin dishes for, for Thanksgiving and the fall, because it really does add a different dimension to your recipe. Yes, ma'am, you sure can. And it's, it's delicious. Um, it's, it's similar to that, that sesame oil in that you don't have to use as much oil. 
um, because it is so packed with, with flavor. But what other types of hummus have you all made? Garlic? Basil? Anybody else have any? We have one that's, let's see, it is chipotle hummus, and it is delicious. We roast the chipotle, and um, that, that one is delicious. I don't think that's on our website, but, um, but there's so many different ways that you can make hummus. We make chocolate hummus. Yes, ma'am. Ah, so one, the only trick I know about, um, about selecting pomegranates is you kind of want it heavier at the bottom. Okay. Um, and that means that it's, a, it's ripe. Okay. Um, that's my only trick that I know. Yeah. But, um, but with pomegranates, there's different ways that you can get the seeds out easier does anybody here have some tried and true method that you've used? Hit it? So you, you cut it in half and then you hit it? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I've done. There's, there's so many, you know, if you go on Google and you Google it, <laughs> there's so many different ways of doing it. Um, but I like this way the one where they do it for me <laughs> because, because sometimes I run out of time to cook and so it's nice when it's already yeah exactly yeah yes yeah and this is a nice little that's a nice serving you know, that's a really nice serving because you can, you know, let's say you use half of it for a salad and then half of it for something else and it won't go to waste. Yeah. Any more comments or questions about the hummus or antioxidants? It's very good? Wonderful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It is. Yeah, it is because... You know, sometimes when I, when I stop at the gas station and I get the little um, containers of hummus with the pretzels, number one, it, it, it's really high in fat. When you, when, you, when you make it yourself, you can control the level of fat that's in there. Um, I mean, olive oil is good fat, so it's, it's a healthy fat for us. But... Um, but I like having control over what ingredients go in it because you can curate your own hummus. You can give them for presents. You know, you can get cute little containers from Michael's or Hobby Lobby and give that for, you know, for, for presents. For people, people love hummus and some nice um, artisan uh, baked chips like we're using with whole grains. Um, it's a wonderful gift. Yes, exactly. So yeah, changing the texture. Um, I personally like smooth. The smoother the better. But my daughter likes the chunky texture, you know? And so we, I make, I just process mine a little bit more. She gets the chunkier parts and I get, you know, the smooth parts. So it, it works out. Yes. I agree. I agree. And that's another thing that you can control is the sugar content and the salt content. And this has no, no added salt, you know, no added sugar. The only sugary thing was maybe a little bit of the, the orange juice. Um, and it's, it is, it's a nice balance of sweet and savory and it uses a, a you know, in season produce and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to, um, like a, a beautiful potluck dish 
to take. You know, you sprinkle it with some pomegranate seeds and some, some pumpkin seeds. It's beautiful. So it's, um, it's very versatile. It's a very versatile dish. And you can use it as sandwich bread as well. It would, it would, with like the nutmeg and the, yeah, you're right. And that's the beauty of hummus is you can, you can flavor it with, with however you want, you know, whether you, if you're more of a savory person, a sweet person, um, you can spice it up with little sugar and little, and no sodium. So thank you for that input. Now, are y'all ready to create your monster? Yes? Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do, and let me make sure I'm doing that on time. The first thing that we're going to do is cut our apple. And remember, it's critical that we hold the knife correctly, right? Um, basic cooking skill of holding the knife, and that is we pinch the top and we hold the handle um, with our other three fingers, right? So if you're gonna if you're gonna create it with me, what you're gonna do is you are going to hold the knife, hold this hand with a like a claw, so that we don't have anybody chopping off any fingers or anything like that. So we're gonna hold the apple with our one hand, and then we're just gonna cut it in half with the knife. Oh, to get the, <laughs> can you help them to get the, um, the covers off? So to get the covers off, you just slide them off. It's not coming out. It's being difficult. There we go. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So we so what we're gonna do at the middle tables you're sharing. Yeah. So the monster is only going to be a quarter of the apple. Okay. Is only gonna be a quarter of the apple. So once you slice the apple in half, then you're gonna lay it down flat, you know, flat, flat part on your chopping, on your cutting board, and then you're gonna cut it again in half, like that. And if your partners don't have an apple, it's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You're not in trouble. <laughs> just, yeah, just work with that one and just cut it in half. And put the flat part down. It's still pretty green. I think that's a good one to go. Okay. There you go. Good job. So does everybody have a quarter of an apple? Yes. What about the back row? One quarter? You got it? Okay. So what we're going to do now is put the apple kind of on its side like that, but flat, right, on the flat side. And you're just going to kind of wedge the core out. You're just going to kind of wedge the core out like that. And it'll look like this. Has everybody wedged out their core? Yes. And I gave you some baggies, so if you have some apple left over or anything left over, you can take it home with you as well. But if everybody has their quarter cord, then the next thing that we're going to do is again put it flat on your cutting board, right? And you're going to cut a V for the mouth, okay? So you're just going to cut a V in the middle of the apple. Okay. 
And don't cut all the way through because this is going to be the mouth of the monster. And just be really careful. And the, the, another beauty of this recipe is that you get to eat while you're making it. So you just eat, you know, the parts of the um, apple that we're not using right now. Can you go around and look at everybody and make sure that they're, they're doing it? They did it okay? Does everybody have their mouth created? Okay. I'll give y'all a little time. So is everybody ready to, everybody got the wedge cut out and you're ready for your peanut butter? Yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the peanut butter. So you've got your spoon and you're just gonna take out the peanut butter and just spread a little bit in the middle of your wedge. So one side is gonna be the bottom part of the mouth and the other side is gonna be the top of the mouth. And the peanut butter is going to be the sticky part for the teeth, like this. So we're gonna take our slivered almonds and we're going to put them in the peanut butter like this. All right, I see a lot of scary looking creatures about to be developed. All right, after you've, after you've put the almonds in, you're gonna take your strawberry and you're just gonna cut the, the green part off of the top. Like that. And then you're gonna cut the strawberry like this, but in half. Okay, because this is going to be your tongue, the monster's tongue. Okay, so it should look like this. All right. All right, let me see what y'all have. That's what it should look like. Okay. 
Everybody with me? Okay. All right, so the next step, we are gonna take our little mini marshmallow and we're gonna cut both ends off of the marshmallow to make them sticky, okay? So we're gonna just take that little marshmallow, cut both ends off, like that, and you should have two sticky sides, all right? Then you're gonna place that marshmallow right on the top part of your monster, and then do the same thing with the other marshmallow. that so it should look like this and then what you're going to do is you're going to put one of the little <laughs> I love it one of the little um, chocolate morsels into the middle of each marshmallow. And how are our monsters looking? <laughs> Very monstery. <laughs> All right, I want to get pictures of them. So that's one thing that we, you know, we, we love food for its nutritional benefit. But food can also be fun. And, you know, with sometimes we can overthink food, but when we remember that we used to play with our food when we were little, you know, food is our friend. Food is enjoyable, it should be enjoyed, and it can be used as a medium for art. Yeah, take all of the leftovers and, and take them home with you. Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. So this size, this size of an apple is um, a, a regular portion size. Some of the apples, a whole one, you can get a whole one. But some of the, have you, how many of you like honey crisp apples? Me too. Have you seen how large they are? <laughs> They're cute. They're like this big. Um, so you do want to be careful, you know, and um, make sure that if you do have prediabetes or diabetes that we, we watch the portion control. Um, I don't know what the best type is. I do know that the most brightly colored um, apples probably have the most nutritional value. Yeah. Any questions on what we talked about today? No? How many of y'all are going to Halloween parties? <laughs> are you? <laughs> This is the first Halloween that I've had that's been cold in Texas. And I yeah. Love it. Yeah, help yourself. Yeah, I, I do too. Love it, love it, love I do too. Love it. Yeah. Well, thank you all for being here. 
Um, thank you all for joining me in the little art project. Did we come back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember that food, it can be fun, and it should be fun, and it should be enjoyed. So thank you all.